Hey friends, Rabbi Jenny Solomon here in Raleigh, North Carolina. I uh, wanted to share with you a little bit of hopefully inspirational Torah in connection with Hanukkah uh, during this Mincha moment that I'm taking. So uh, many of you know, of course, that Hanukkah celebrates miracles. And in particular, there are two miracles that often get conflated, but one has to do with um, the oil that lasted, was supposed to only last one night uh, as the um, as the temple was re, um, rededicated and to light up the, the menorah, the candelabra in the temple. And it lasted, of course, eight. And then there's another miracle story that um, goes alongside this, this particular miracle story, which has its roots with the rabbis in the Talmud. And this is a historical miracle. This is a story of uh, the Maccabees, who uh, were a small band of Jews who were unwilling to accept the imposition um, to be mild, but the, really the persecution of the Seleucid Greeks and um, to fight for their right to, to be Jewish and to practice Judaism in the fullest sense. And despite all odds, they won this military victory. Um, and so we have, and we're able to rededicate the temple and sort of reestablish their sovereignty and their sense of um, freedom, religious freedom. So we have these uh, multiple miracles that uh, exist alongside one another. And of course, we can extrapolate out to be um, mindful of all kinds of miracles that are a part of our lives and which we feel very personally um, during this season. As, as the years go by, however we, we find ourselves year to year. Um, but I wanna say that I've always connected more to the, the miracle of the light in the temple. Maybe it's because I'm a rabbi. <laughs> it's a rabbinic story, um, rather than the miracle of the Maccabean warriors who, who won this military battle. And I think it's because of my own resistance and sort of just inability to um, imagine myself as a warrior. Now that began to shift, interestingly, uh, just in recent times. In my yoga practice, I'm really fortunate to have some incredible, incredibly gifted, wise teachers um, who utilize the embodied shapes of warrior in all kinds of ways. There's warrior one, there's warrior two, there's fallen warrior, there's a humble warrior. Um, I'm not even an expert enough to know other than I, I'm a devoted uh, practitioner and so I learn as, as my teachers teach me. But there's all these different ways. There's a reverse warrior. Um, and I think one of the, the, spiritual, the spiritual stance of a warrior, um, at least in yoga, is very different than what I think of as a warrior on the battlefield. But one of the things that they, um, they actually share in common is um, a particular superpower. And uh, I encountered a teaching very recently that spoke to this so beautifully. And so I've been using this practice in my own personal practice and I wanna share it with you. It's a practice and a teaching from Jeff Warren, who's a gifted, um, a gifted meditation teacher from Toronto. And he talks about uh, the superpower of the warrior is equanimity. So equanimity is that quality, that stance of being sort of steady and whole, even um, as circumstances shift and even as we may find ourselves in conditions uh, that challenge us. And he talks about using, even in the course of meditation, the inhale as a moment to really feel our own spiritual warrior and using the exhale to channel our inner caretaker. And of course, the superpower of the caretaker is compassion, self-compassion. And we need both to live in this world. Um, and I don't think we need to imagine ourselves as warriors on a battlefield um, to really connect to this uh, spiritual stance 
I think that to get up in the morning and get out into the world is really the work of a warrior. It always is, but it feels especially so during these challenging days. And, um, and so as we, the, the idea is that as we inhale, we fill ourselves with courage, with strength, with equanimity, with the belief that we can be, we can stand strong, we can, I'm thinking yogically, we can take up space, uh, no matter the circumstances. And, um, and that we have the resources that we need to meet this moment. And on the flip side, the caretaker comes in to say, ah, you can also back away from this intensity. You can acknowledge safely your limitations and, um, and you can be gentle, loving, caring, compassionate with yourself as you acknowledge those limits, that um, quality of our, our humanity, which is fragile and vulnerable. So I love this practice of channeling sort of in perfect balance, um, our own inner spiritual warrior, perhaps our own inner Maccabee, um, but also our own inner caretaker the one that says, um, I know this is a lot. Come home. It's okay. So I share this practice with you um, because it's been helpful to me. And I hope that uh, through the remainder of this seventh day and into our eighth night and eighth day as we close out this beautiful light, a uh, holiday of light um, amidst uh, the darkness, both the the, the actual physical darkness of the season approaching the winter solstice, but also uh, the figurative darkness of an ongoing pandemic and of all the other challenges that our community and our global community are facing. That we can continue to practice whether we're doing the meditation breath practice or we're moving mindfully, um, or just moving through our day, that even just a single deep breath, an inhalation in which we feel, express, embody, embrace our own inner spiritual warrior, and an exhalation in which we usher in, welcome in our own caretaker that reminds us to give ourselves some love, some compassion. We need it. All right. Peace, everyone. Shalom.